Hello, everybody, and welcome to Intro to Visual Methods with BioRender. Today, we'll be talking about how to make a visual method using BioRender. So, we're going to show how to create an illustration file, resize your canvas so that it's a little more convenient to work with, add icons, arrows, and text, then kind of arrange all this into a visual method and export it as a PNG file. So, in order to do that, we're going to have to go to BioRender, which is, we can just go to BioRender.com up here. Uh, you can also Google BioRender and pop in that way. Once you get on this page, go directly to sign in. Do not, I don't think you need to go to sign up. Sign in. Click this login with SSO button down here. This will ask you for your email address where you put in your Delaware email and then click the login with Delaware stuff. It should direct you to the Delaware login portal, so put in your email, password, 2FA, if you have that set up, which I think you have to. Uh, fun fact on your 2FA, when they ask you, do you want to save this device, you can only save one device at a time, so if you keep saving devices between like your phone and your computer, and you keep wondering why you keep clicking that button, that's why. When you click it on one device, it cancels the other one. All right, so once we're on kind of this page here, we have a whole bunch of stuff up here. You can start with one of these templates if you want, probably not super relevant for anything we'll do in our course. Um, so I recommend just going to create new, create new, whichever one of these floats your boat. We're gonna click illustration. There is a poster builder here, which um, I didn't know about, so that might be fun to explore on your own, but let's create a new illustration. <clears throat> So there are two places that you are going to create and use visual methods. The first one, well, three, I guess. Uh, we might occasionally ask for them as a pre-lab submission. Uh, we will often ask for them in post-lab submissions, and we will also definitely ask for them on your post-store post -store submissions. So knowing how to make these can be useful. Um, the very first thing we're going to do before we do anything else is we're actually going to change the canvas size. So right now this is 10 inches by 7. Uh, because we submit these as PDFs on Canvas most of the time, I'm going to recommend you make these 6.5 inches wide. Uh, the height's not as important, so we'll just set that to 4. You can make these taller if you want to, but I would not change this uh, horizontal width and obviously you can resize these but the idea here is that by picking a six and a half inch wide template when you put it into like google docs or word or however you prepare your reports we do recommend google docs and your group folders um it's already the size it will show up in your final paper uh, when you submit it to canvas so let's get to work. So let's say I want to make a visual method on how to measure the density of unknown metals. This is a lab we do early in the fall, usually. Um, depending on the future, that may or may not change. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to relabel this project to density visual method. Uh, and now I'm just going to get started. So first thing, I want to find some text some icons to put in here so i'm gonna look for metal we got uh some metal bars so these can be my unknown metals notice that there are uh different types of icons so there's icons that have this little purple uh, thing on the bottom that usually means they're a grouped icon and they have properties that you can edit in them ones that have these uh these icons you can change the color <laughs> it's the tower of doom uh, but you can change the uh, colors of these pretty easily this one supports that as well um, so i want some metals for my visual i'm going to want some kind of balance so they have an analytical balance that i can use and i'm going to want a graduated cylinder <clears throat> and notice that this one says the liquid in here is editable um, so there are some pretty cool uh, images that have extra functionality. 
So these are going to form the basis of my visual method here. Um, I'm going to do an experiment where, say, I have different unknown metals. So I'm going to shrink this down and put down a few of them. And then maybe recolor them. So we have some gold, we have some copper, we have some, I don't know, zinc, iron. This looks like aluminum. And we'll get these nice and evened out. And I'm going to group these as a group so that I can move them around all at once. See, bada boom. Now I'm going to spread these out. I don't like how large this is because it's just like way larger than my other visual elements in here. I wonder if I can fatten it. I don't like that. All right. Now we're going to play with some alignment tools here. I'm going to align these in the middle. We're going to distribute these horizontally. Oh, wow. That was really, uh, what can I say? I'm a visual expert. Uh, and that just makes it so these are evenly spaced. Uh, and this is basically the core of my protocol. I'm going to say something like, well, I had some unknown metals. I got their masses, and then I measured their volumes. To kind of help with that, I'm going to take this copper one. Oops. Notice that I, I double-clicked on this, and now I'm editing the grouped icon. I'm going to edit, leave the grouped icon so that I can put this here. I'm going to put my metal on my balance. Nice and cutesy. Put another one over here. Um, I'm going to hold the Alt key because apparently that lets me do all my dimensions at once, so it keeps it centered. All right, and then I'm going to click around inside this guy, and I'm just going to lower the level of that fluid. Now, if I wanted to be really fancy, I could probably break up this grouped icon and layer it so that this is underneath this transparent water level. Um, I can make it transparent, but I'm just going to leave it there. All right, so this is my core template now. I want to add arrows to it because these are connected protocols. Um, if you, somewhere on here, maybe if I hover on this, I know there's a way to get a visual, like a little video to pop up on how to use different things. But whatever, we'll just put the arrow down. So these are pretty cool, actually. You can like drag these middle pieces to add more connections to them. And if they're long enough, you'll get them back. And if they end up too short like this, they'll, they won't give you the option of any more. I don't need those for what we're doing here. We're just going to put down some arrows. These are probably... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Just going to do another alignment. Oop. Oops, forgot about that. So these I'll have to group, or else any manipulation I do will do weird stuff to them. All right. So we're going to align that again. Um, I assume distributing this won't go well with the arrows, but we'll see. Eh, okay, whatever. All right, and then last but not least, I want some text on here. So it's very likely that I'm going to use this regular size 14 font. You know, I'm going to have different parts to my protocol, so maybe I have... I'm going to cheat. Normally, normally I would label these A, B, C and refer to them that way, but we're just going to... We're going to assume that this is part of a multi-step protocol. So, like, maybe I have one section of my protocol where I am identifying unknown metals. Um, and we'll call this part part A... We'll just put here, boom. And then that leaves me, if I use letters down here, I'm gonna have like part AA and that'll be confusing. So now we'll call this part one. Uh, we'll center this. And we'll put it so that it is centered underneath its top element. And do that for each, oop, each of these. So really make sure you use those alignment tools you have available to you. Um, I don't like how close these are, so we're just going to lower it a teensy bit. And there we go. We have a part A. 
And let's say maybe we need more space. Maybe um, I wonder if I shrink. I'm willing to bet the text doesn't. Oh, the text does shrink. Okay, that's annoying. All right, so I'm going to get us some more space. We're just going to shrink this a little bit. <clears throat> and then we'll recenter these. And this is because maybe I have a two part protocol where, in like the first part of the protocol, I'm measuring different metals. And then in the second part of the protocol, I might only be measuring one metal many times, but for different reasons. So we're going to take this guy, and we're just going to click on there, and we'll turn this back to this dude. And then this is where things are going to get weird, because maybe I have different size cylinders. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing here. But what that means is I need, oh, here, why don't we change this so that it's the right color. So we're going to take this dude. We're going to delete this for now. And what I want to do is put different size cylinders down because maybe my goal here is... So we're just going to warp it, whatever. We're going to smoosh it. So we're going to have that size cylinder. We're going to have a fat one. I wonder if there's like a... That's the line. These are all bottom aligned. I don't like that these aren't exactly lining up there. I don't know how much they weigh. Okay, I think I can know. And then this part's important is that my metal should stay <laughs> should stay the same size. So I'll just put more of these on here. Boom, boom, boom. And whatever. All right, so there we go. And now we're gonna copy this down here. And we'll put this so that it goes there. And one can wait for these guys. Group. Group. And we will just horizontally distribute these. I didn't like that. I guess I, the problem is I don't like the bounding box on here. All right, good enough. Good enough. I'm paying attention to the little gap here because that's what's visually telling me how far apart these are. All right, so now I have two protocols. My first one, I'm doing unknown metals. And my second one, I'm testing the effect of different cylinders on the size of this. Uh, we're going to zoom back out to 100%, uh, just to make sure this doesn't look terrible. And so this would be it. Uh, this would be my visual method. Now, if I wanted to be a little fancier, maybe I would put a box around these. I might send it to the back so it's not hiding everything. Oh, I like that it adds some like background to it. And send that to the back. Like that. Um, I guess I would move this. Alternatively, I could make a whole bunch of little ones around these. Apparently I forgot my arrows. So lots of, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do here. Uh, and then last but not least, I am going to write a figure caption for this, but I'm not going to include it in the picture because we don't embed figure captions in pictures. We write them in whatever software we use to assemble this. So I'm going to call this figure two, because typically this is our second figure if we're on like a poster, because we'd have our system model before this. If it's a live report, eh, this might be your first figure, whatever. I'm going to call this protocols for measuring densities, part A, 
identifying unknown metals. A1, unknown metals, A2 were masked, and A3, their volumes were determined by water displacement. Part B, um, what do we call this? Let's call it measuring cylinder Ooh, volume precision. B1 aluminum samples. B2 were massed and B3 their volumes. I don't like this it's getting a little long here, but whatever were determined by water displacement in different graduated cylinders. <clears throat> and there we go. So lastly, what we're going to do is um, we're going to take this, we're going to export it. One thing I might, I might do is I don't like to export white space if I don't need it. Um, so I, I would probably shrink this before I export it. I know we went through all that trouble to make that six and a half, and that's great for when you're making this and you're trying to frame it correctly. But now when we export it, like, I don't want this white space if I don't need it. Let's align these guys to the right. Get rid of this. Bada boom. And now we just export. So we have a export button up here. We can also do file export, whatever. We have our dimensions, our file type. I do recommend, just like it recommends, to export this as a PNG. That will be a lossless image type so that you'll have a nice high quality picture for whatever you're doing. Uh, transparent background is up to you. If you do the transparent background, this white that doesn't have anything on it will show up as a uh, clear. So if you put this on your poster and you have a background color, the background color will show through here. If you don't do this, this will export as a white background. Um, both are useful. So if you make it transparent, you can always put a white box behind it if you decide you need it. Uh, I do recommend the 300 DPI. We actually, because we only do things in uh, digital formats, you could probably get away with the 150. I wouldn't do the 72, but the 150 would look okay at your post lab PDFs, I think, and on your posters when they're not printed. But if you are ever going to print them, definitely do 300 DPI. Um, or if you're going to blow it up really large, you might want to make it 600 DPI too. Uh, and you should like, if you're going to blow it up, you should change these dimensions too. All right, so we hit export. It's going to download a copy to your computer. And then you get this uh, reminder to cite BioRender. Uh, with us, it's not a big deal because this is all internal educational stuff. But if you're going to, say, print your poster for a conference, like you want to participate in the undergraduate biology conference we have on campus, then you need to add this to... Uh, the end of your figure, uh, which isn't hard. Like you would just go to your figure caption and add it at the very end, created with BioRender.com. And that's it. That's uh, that's how you make a nice visual method with BioRender. It's a powerful tool, and I'm really hoping the university continues to keep its enterprise edition. If we lose it, the uh, free edition can do all of this. I think you're limited in how many files you can have active and you do not get all of the icons and templates and like tools available to you. That's the protein database. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Um, we don't need to worry about that. But the that's, that's fun for me. So I hope this was informative and I hope you will make some beautiful visual methods for us in the future. Thank you and have a good day.